tonight. Meantime, back at the Bell Centre to get ready for Toronto and Montreal, the lovely story of the Bowmans. Uh, Elliot. Well, Ron, Scotty Bowman knew that he had a job for life with the Detroit Red Wings, but last summer he was presented with an opportunity he just couldn't pass up. Eight years ago, Stan Bowman joined the Chicago Blackhawks, determined to begin an executive career of his own without the help of his famous father. Now they are back together, father and son, two very similar men, stoic and tough to crack. Best story you can tell about Scott. Boy, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> and Scott, I'm going to ask you the same question. I got my so, answer. Okay, so what? So while Stan's thinking, why don't you go first? Well, when when Stan was born in in June of '73, we had just won the cup, and for maybe for the first year or two, we just used to call him Stanley Cup, although his name is Stanley Glenn, and uh, the Glenn was named after Glenn Hall. So, you know, his name is Stanley after the cup and Glenn Hall, Glenn after, after the great goalie. He was about two and a, maybe two going on three, and uh, I went to, the, to get a license or something. And, or I went somewhere that I had to give a, a summary of different, my family. And I, and I said, uh, like, you know, my daughter, and then I mentioned my other son, David, and then Stanley Glenn. And uh, he, he was listening, and he didn't say much, and got in, into my truck and drove back to the farm, and, and he was really down. And I said, you know, wh what's going on? He said, isn't my name Stanley Cup anymore? <laughs> so that was, I always remember that about, I said, no, you're always Stanley Cup. <laughs> Stan, for millions of hockey fans, we only know your dad as the stoic man behind the bench. How would you describe him to us? The thing that stands out for me, and now that I'm a father, is you know he's he's so committed to our family. And I think um, growing up as a kid, I, I almost didn't understand that a lot of times because we, um, when he would took the job in Pittsburgh, he decided to leave us in Buffalo. We were all in school at the time, um, and he would do the commuting back and forth. And a lot of times he would drive home after a game. He'd get home at one in the morning, and then he would see us in the morning as we would get ready to go to school and then he would turn around and drive back for practice and I would think to my I would say to my mom why does he even come home for since that's such a waste to drive six hours just to see us for you know half an hour in the morning but that was important to him and now that I've got a family I can imagine you know I would want to do the same thing when you're coaching um, it is 24-7 once once that training camp starts until the last game is played that season. Uh, all the coaches will tell you, you're, you're, you're at home, but sometimes your mind is somewhere else. Scotty Bowman's thoughts were very much on Stan when the son was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma two years ago, leading to a painful series of treatments that thankfully have worked well as can be hoped. You don't really think when you're 33 years old you're gonna get cancer. I'd never really given it a, a thought. And then when it pops up, you know, it's a surprise. You can't really dwell on it or feel sorry for yourself because, um, you know, it, it, life is too short to, to do that. So um, I'm very optimistic. I feel great. And, um, you know, I'm happy I've gotten to where I am now. How hard is it to tell your dad and your mom that you're sick with cancer? You know, there were a lot of tears on that day. And um, it was, uh, it was one of those things where, um, you know, the, the beginning is the hardest part, and I'm sure other people who've been through these types of things is, you know, in the beginning you start thinking the worst, and you wonder, boy, how, how are you ever going to do this? And once you actually get past that and you start with your treatment, you really do rally around, you know, it just becomes kind of another task. Well, this is what I got to do to get through it. I was devastated like everybody, but I had uh, a lot of good support staff. That staff included Dr. David Mulder, the Montreal doctor who treated Saku Koivu, Pat Burns, who continues to fight the disease, and two others who've become close friends, Harry Neal and Mike Babcock. When you're a parent, and I always see the mums when I go to the hospital, the mums there with their child, changes your life forever. And I don't care uh, if your child is 14, 5, 35, they're still your child. Last summer, after collecting his 11th Stanley Cup as a coach or an executive, the offer came to join Stan. He had to go. Uh, when he talked to myself and when he talked to Ken about making this decision, we all told him the same thing. He had to go. He had no option. There's some things, when you have a chance to work with your son in the National Hockey League, it's a no-brainer. Scotty's eyes really lit up when the Chicago deal came through. Not because he wanted to move, but a chance to, to work with Stan. Chicago is a team on the rise, one that can certainly benefit from Bowman's expertise, although he says he will not be a coach or GM again. 
And if the Hawks do win a cup, the father and son party would be the Bowman's biggest ever. He lives on the sixth hole of this golf course, and the foursomes would come, hit their ball off the tee, then they'd come in, get their picture taken with the Stanley Cup, finish the sixth hole. Scotty was happy about that. I said to Scotty one day, it must be getting boring, and he said, Harry, the new one's the best one. The last one you win's the best one until you've stopped and you're out of the business and you may look back and think one was better than the other. But I can't imagine the, the party in the backyard if they, Chicago wins the Stanley Cup and Stan and Scotty have got the cup there. Always great to see Harry Neal, who's in uh, Ottawa tonight for the Buffalo Sabre game. He and Scotty Bowman and Donnie Lever and Karen live in the same Ricky Lee. They're all down in that area of Buffalo. What parties uh, they have talking hockey. Well,